Now I'm going to help you to understand what the last days meant. But before we go there, I want all of my brothers and my sisters, I want y'all to understand the Bible is a book of prophecy. Right. The Bible foretold us coming to America on slave ships, my sister. I don't know if you knew that or not. All right. The Bible foretells the destruction of America, which is soon to come, my sister. Right. The Bible foretold of World War I, World War II, and it says it's only going to be three world wars. And World War III will happen soon. Right. So you want to make sure that you're on the right side of that war, because that war is going to be between uh, different white nations. And we ain't supposed to be involved with that. Right. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, That's right. is coming in the midst of World War III. Right. So when he comes, you don't want to be caught in the middle of your sins. Right. You don't want to be caught at home on the Sabbath day. Right. You don't want to be caught in pants because God says women shouldn't wear pants. Teach. You shouldn't be caught in a tattoo parlor getting a fresh tat of your girlfriend on your neck because God says you shouldn't be marking up on your body. Right. Your body is God's temple. Right. And you must respect it and treat it as such. That's right. But let me help you all understand what this book is. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 uh -huh. declaring the end from the beginning the Bible says God's words this so this Bible King James version of the Bible does what declaring the end from the beginning the end of time was declared from the beginning of time in Genesis God prophesied about these days right 2023 1619 we can read about all the history that was going to happen to us in the book of Genesis but do you have the understanding and the wisdom to decode it do you have the precepts to understand it we have them we have the keys of life right we have the keys to the kingdom of heaven and we're trying to give it to our people read on and from ancient times the things that are not yet done the ancient times are Genesis 49 when Jacob gathered his 12 sons together right Deuteronomy 33 the same prophecies by the hand of Moses. Read on. Saying, my counsel shall stand. God's counsel will stand. Right. What is God's counsel? The Bible. Yes, the right. Bible. The Bible. Right. That is God's counsel. So now we're back at Genesis 49. No, no, we're not going back there. Hold that. Second Ezra 6. Second Ezra 6 and 9. The brother wanted to understand, well, how do we know that when it said the last days, we're talking about these last days? Because it was, it was the last days several times. It was the last days for a lot of people when the flood came, right? Because they were killed. It was the last days at some point in time in Egypt, in Assyria, in Persia media, in Greece, in Rome, in Babylon. It was the last days many different times. But when the Bible is talking about the last days, let's give some context to it. You got what I want? Yes, sir. Read. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end. Start at verse 6. Verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. Through Christ alone. Read on. And through none other. By me also they shall be ended. All these things shall be ended through Christ. Right. When are they going to be ended? In the last days. Read on. And by none other. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the time? This is a question that the prophet Ezra asked the angel. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Teach. If the times get parted asunder or divided, if anything gets divided, now you have a what? You have an end of one time and then what? The beginning of another time. Right. So Ezra is asking, when is going to be the last days that was prophesied in Genesis 49? Read on. What shall be the parting asunder of the time? Uh -huh. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Read on. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac. From Abraham unto Isaac. Read on. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, uh -huh. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, which was a prophecy. Read on. For Esau is the end of the world. For Esau is the end of the world. He is the beginning of the what days? The last days. Right. So in Genesis 49, when our forefather Jacob said, let me prophesy to you what's going to happen in the last days. What days is he talking about? It's got to be now. It's got to be the days during the time of Esau ruling. 
Right. Well, okay. Because Esau started his rule with... Esau started with Rome. I thought it was Greece. I'm sorry. He started with Greece. Rome. Then with Rome. Now. Correct. And Esau is still ruling now. Right. right. But the official start of that time wasn't until Christ died. Right. right. Okay. And Christ died under whose rule? Rome. Rome, which is who? Uh, Esau. 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 Right. Esau. Right. Yeah, still same kingdom. There you go. Exact same kingdom. Read on. For Esau is the end of the world, uh -huh. and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. There it is. That's the parting asunder of the times. So that's how we know when the real last days are. It has to be during the time of Esau's rule. And then not only that, but also after Christ has died. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 33. Now that we have a better understanding of that. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 20. And of Gad he said. And of Gad he said. We just read about Gad in Genesis chapter 49 verse 19. It said that a troop would overcome him. But before the troop overcame Gad. Before the uh, American cavalry troop. Led by Andrew Jackson overcame Gad. This was the prophecy of the tribe of Gad. Read on. Blessed be he that enlarged Gad. Uh -huh. He dwelleth as a lion. The Bible says Gad would dwell as a lion. Whenever you look at the pictures of the ancient chiefs of the Native American Indians, what did they have? Uh, lion furs. They used to have a lion furs. They had a whole head over top of their head. The Bible prophesied that before it ever happened. During the time of Moses, that was prophesied. Read on. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. The Bible said they would tear the arm. What did Gad do when they made a, a covenant between each other? The Native Americans, what was common between them? If me and you was brothers, it, it was a blood pact. Yeah, was a that was exactly it. We would cut our hand, we would cut our wrist, and we would shake hands. And that would represent a covenant between you and I. The Bible prophesied the end from the beginning. Read on. And he provided the first part for himself. And he did what? He provided the first part for himself. The Bible says that Gad would provide the first part for himself. So that means in 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 40 through 45, when the northern tribes of Israel came over, the Gadites, the Native Americans, would take the primary, the mainland. What is the mainland? It's the same land that the white man came over here and colonized. Right. right. Yeah. That mainland is North America. That's right. right. That's why we know that the Native American Indians are indeed the tribe of Gad. Right. Because they are of the tribes that came over that resided in the mainland. That's right. That was the Bible prophecy. Read on. Because there, and a portion of the lawgiver. And, and not only that. He set himself up there because he was the leader amongst the 12 tribes at that time. He stood in the portion of a lawgiver. Read on. In the portion of the lawgiver was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people. And he came with what? With the heads of the people. Gad was nothing to be messed with. The only reason they were overcome by the so-called white man is not what, that's how they were overcome. But the reason that they were overcome is not because the white man was smarter, not because he was stronger, not because he was more of a warrior than the tribe of Gad, but because the tribe of Gad was in the midst of their sin. Right. I agree, but I, I have a different perception on Esau in that situation because they ought to see the Satan and they're cunning just like their father. So what they, they would do is they would befriend us. They would smile in our face. They do it to this day, even on our jobs. They are smiling our face and, you know, kind of learn our ways. And they, they learned the ways of our people. And then that's how they took over. But I, that was just, that's just. No, but th that is correct. That is correct. But Satan only has power over us. His children only have power over us if we are in the midst of sin. If we don't commit sin, Satan has no power over us. Neither does his children, the so-called white man, woman, and child. They have no power over us. And we're going to address that as soon as we finish. I'm going to get that in Judah chapter 5. All right, behold that. I want to finish this on get. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 21. Uh -huh. And he provided the first part for himself, because there in a portion of the lawgiver was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people. He came with the heads of the people because he could conquer the people. Nobody was stronger than Gad. They were, they were sharper with an arrow from a distance than the white man was with his gun. Right. 
and make a shooter with the right hand or the left. That's right. Read on. He executed the justice of the Lord uh -huh. and his judgments with Israel. So that's how we know that Gad, not only was he overcame by a troop, by Andrew Jackson, but he's the tribe that resided in the mainland. He kept the first part, the best part, for himself. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 